Hey everyone, and welcome back to the third episode in my Tower Defense game series. Today, I will be adding UI, so that way you actually have to click a button down here to place down towers. So let's hop right into it. As you can see here, I have two brand new sprites. One is named UI, and one is named Particles. Inside of the UI, I have a button for arrow towers. As you can see, it's just a cool looking button with the arrow tower. And then I have arrow tower two, that is going to be when you hover over that button. So it pops up the description of it. So it's 200 gold, one damage, and fast speed. Right now, this is just for details because we haven't actually added money yet, but we will in the future. Then I have the background. So this is just where the buttons are going to go. Then for the particles, I just have a little particle, like a puff cloud. And this is going to be when you place down a tower. So I'll go ahead and just quickly add the particles first. So inside of the turret clone here, I want to go ahead and pull out a when I start as a clone underneath here. Next, I want to make two new variables, and these are going to be keeping track of where we're spawning the particles. So I want to name this particle spawn X, like this, and that is going to be for all sprites. Copy and paste that by holding Control C, click OK, and make a new variable and name this particle spawn Y. So these are the X and Y coordinates for where the particles are going to spawn. Next, go ahead and set that particle spawn X, duplicate it, and do particle spawn Y to X and Y position, like so. Next, do a repeat here and go to operators and pull out a pick random 1 to 10 and change this 4 to 7. Also, do a chain size by negative 10. Next, do a repeat 10 times and change it to 3 looks and do a set size to 75% here. So now, as you can see, it kind of just does a little shrinking animation that looks really nice when you place it down. Okay, so now that we have the X and Y for the particles, I want to do a create clone of myself and changes to particles after the chain size by negative 10. Now let's go ahead and go into particles and program this. So I will start by pulling out a when green flag clicked and then a hide block so that way it hides the initial sprite and then pull out a show block and put that underneath a when I start as a clone. Next, I want to do a go to zero zero and do go to particle spawn X and particle spawn Y. Then a go to front here. That way it's in front of everything. Next, do a clear graphics effects and a point in direction block. And you can just pull out a pick random one to 10 and do pick random one to 360. That is going to make it to where it can point any direction that way it kind of randomizes a little bit and to randomize this further i want to set the size to go ahead and duplicate the pick random and do 75 to 125 that means it's going to have quite a big range for getting smaller and bigger i'll do a repeat 50 times here a turn one degree clockwise a move one step so it's just kind of gonna float away and then a change the ghost effect by two so if you do the math here 50 times two is 100 and 100 percent is all the way transparent so that means it's going to completely fade out and then delete this clone so if we made all the particles go to the right and do the same thing it's going to look kind of the same we want to make it to have another possible outcome of turning counterclockwise so go ahead and pull on if else and an equals and do if pick random one to two is equal to one so if it's equal to one it's going to go to the right then otherwise duplicate all that coding and the only thing is just change it to turn one degrees counterclockwise so it's a 50 50 percent chance chance to go counterclockwise or clockwise. So now if we go ahead and place down a tower, as you can see, look at that. It actually makes a bunch of particles, which look really, really nice. It kind of just add some puff to it. I think I'm going to actually do 50% to 75% because I think they're a little bit big, maybe to 50 to 100%. Just I want to make them a little bit smaller. Then one more thing is if you notice here, when we place them down, they're a little bit high. So I want to do particle spawn Y minus like 25, say. So now, as you can see, it spawns right in the middle of them, which looks way, way, way better. Boom. Now on to the a little bit more tricky part, the UI. So this is going to be the, these are going to be the buttons that you push to place down towers. Go into the UI and pull out a wind green flag click. Then a show block here, a go to zero zero, and then a forever loop here, then a go to front, and a switch costume to background. So now if we go ahead and start this, there we go, we have our nice little UI pop up where our buttons are going to be. And the costume BG is this one, which is just like the kind of background of the button. Next, I want to make a clone ID variable to keep track of what ID of button it is. So I want to make one just named button clone ID, like so, and make sure to do for the sprite 
only. Next, I want to go ahead and set that button clone ID up here to zero. Then a pull out a repeat 10 times and put it above the forever loop and change this to three times and change it to one time because right now we're only going to have one button, which is this guy right here. Then change the button clone ID by one and create clone of myself. Then do a when I start as a clone here and do an if else here. Next, we're going to do the similar thing we've done for all the other ones. We're going to do an equal sign and do if the bullet clone ID is equal to one button clone ID, I'm sorry, is equal to one, which is the first button. Then I want to switch costume to the arrow tower, which is the first button. And then I want to pull out a go to block. I want this guy to go to 208 for X and negative 151 for the Y. So as you can see here, it's in the bottom right corner. So we're going to put that in there and then do a forever loop here. So this is where we're gonna actually detect if we're touching the mouse pointer. We're gonna go ahead and pull out an if else statement inside of this and do if touching mouse pointer, then go ahead and switch the costume to arrow tower two. Duplicate it and do arrow tower one in the else statement here. Next, we want to do a chain size by and we want to make a little algorithm to make it to where when we touch it, it'll actually make the, bolt, the button get a little bit bigger. So we're going to want to pull out a minus block and then a dividing block. You're going to want to put the minus on the left side, go into looks and pull out a size and put it on the right side. So it's going to be blank minus size divided by blank. So the one on the right is how fast it does it. So I'm going to do two. Then on the right is the size it's going to grow to. So right now it's at 100%. So I want it to go to 115%. So change size by all that. Then in the else here, I'll do 100 divided and all that. So now if we go ahead and start this, we're not going to be able to see this. That is because this is behind it. So we're going to want to just do a go to front block when I start as a clone like so. So as you can see right now, my layering isn't working properly. So go ahead and take out the go to front in the forever loop and then do when clicked here and do a just a wait 0.1 seconds here and then do go to front and then put that in a forever loop so now that's going to make the ui go to front and then when i start as a clone i want to forever go to front also so that way we can actually see this guy so as you can see here now the layering is working and if we go ahead and hover over this it switches to the right costume and it grows. So remember what I was saying about all the stuff here? This is the size it's going to set to. So if I were to do 150, it's going to go all the way to 150%. And then if I were to do divided by like five, say, look at that. Look how slow that is. Or even something like 25. Look at that. It's like super slow. So I like two and 115, but you can play around with what you like. So now we want to make a brand new variable and name this placing what. So this is going to be doing what we're placing down currently. So I'm going to click OK and that's going to be for our sprites. And in the beginning, I want to set that placing what to in slash a, which is no answer. Because in the beginning, we're not placing anything. Then in this if mouse down, I want to do if the placing what equals in a because we don't want you to be able to click on that button if you're already trying to place down a tower then i want to set what we're placing here placing set placing what here to arrow tower so basically in the beginning now we are set placing what to in a and then if we click this button it'll set placing what to arrow tower so now as you can see here our cursor here still appears like to why we're trying to place a tower i do not want this i want to only show if this variable placing what is equal to arrow tower. So all we need to do is go into towers here and see this forever loop that we have all the stuff in for placing it. Just put an if else statement here and put everything we've done here into the else here. Then in the if part, just do if placing what is equal to in a. That means we're not placing anything. Then I want to just do a hide block. So now as you can see here, we can't see the cursor appear, but as soon as we click on this, boom, it looks like we actually have a cursor that we can place down and we can click. Now go ahead and take all this stuff out. And in here, I want to do an if else and do if placing what 
is equal to go ahead back into UI and copy and paste arrow tower. That way it's the exact same. So if it equals arrow tower, then do all this. So what this is doing is later when we have multiple towers, we can just duplicate this and then say whatever it may be, blah, 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 tower. And we can change all the stuff inside here. So for now, just leave that blank. So now what we need to do is see this if mouse down here. I want to go ahead and set that placing what to in a probably once you place it down it's going to set the placing what back to in a so you get the cursor back layering is wrong again but i'll fix that in a second so basically if we click on this if we click on this button we have this cursor and if we place it down it goes away so we actually have to manually click on this every time so that way we can place it down and it's actually working really nicely and it looks way better because we click boom boom and it works nicely so i want to go into the level top because it's not wanting to play nicely as you can see we're forever making it go forward six layers so in the ui here i want to do forever go to eight layers maybe that'll help a little bit so there we go as you can see okay it does it half of the time okay so all of that stuff didn't really work so if we just put this go to front here in the forever loop like this it's not really working all right guys so i think i have a fix to it if we make a new message and do update and then when i receive update here a go to front and then go ahead and go into backdrops here and do when clicked forever broadcast update as you can see here this works but my only problem now is as you can see this thing is flickering because they're both trying to go to front at the same time so you want to do an if statement here and this just do the if button clone id not equal to one then to make this actually work at the end of it making this repeat loop i want to set the button clone id to zero so if you put an if else statement here and do go to front and change this to a go forward one layers and then on the else statement go forward two layers boom there it goes it actually works Oh man, that took a long time. So all you need to do here is this little statement right here and to make, oh no, it's not working now. Okay guys, so I finally figured this out. Oh my gosh. So all you need to do is this, in this forever loop with the switch costume to background, just do a go to front here. And then in the if else here, do a go forward one layers and 25 on the else for the clone. Then in the top, you just do a forever go to front. And as you can see here, this layering is working so we can collect we can set this and get all the layering to work correctly so that was a little bit of a hassle but hopefully that helped you fix your layering problems if you did have any like me but anyways thank you all so much for watching i hope this tutorial helped you out or you just enjoyed it make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing for more future content but anyways this has been owen and i am out